Welcome back, ZeroK fans, to Nanolins of Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we're going to have another replay. Pet Turtle versus JXG. Pet Turtle on the rovers. People want to come light vehicles because they were called before. And JXG on shields, and we're on Rogue's River, but the new Rogue's River! It has trees! It has been forested! It's a tree! Hooray for trees! I mean, it's still pretty barren, but, you know, there's some trees. Anyway... Light vehicles versus shields. We've talked about this matchup before last week. I went over a replay, but last week, people were objecting a little bit, for good reason, because the replay did show a bit of a failure on the part of the vehicle player to actually micro, or macro properly. Kind of both, but mostly macro. So I'm curious how this is going to work, because Pet Turtle, at least by rating, is a little bit... Actually, which one's better? No, no seriously, I can't remember which one's better. I think... I think Pet Turtles is better... But I honestly don't know. So this is a fairly even match as far as I'm concerned. I'll just call it that and leave it there. Anyway, Pet Turtle and JXG, they are going to be fetting it off pretty much as it is right now. I mean, it's... Pet Turtle is going in a bit of a rating to start with the darts. JXG, on the other hand, trying to find if anything's been built up over to the north. Because it is worth noting there are several start locations. Like this set of metal extractors along with the one down here. They're also start locations, though I think... I think we'll be one that's generally these two. Like, the ones that are, we're currently seeing right now. But I'm not entirely sure. I haven't had a chance to play on this map. I've been playing matchmaking a bit myself, but Rogue's River has not come up, despite the fact that it is on the matchmaking list. Anyway, Pet Turtle should be able to defend against these bands just fine. They do have a fairly strong setup here. And they are also... Yeah, they're just fine. Micro positioning is fine. Macro positioning is pretty strong. JXG is having a much harder time building their economy up. I mean, if you're looking, look at Petrol's economy right now. They have six metal extractors currently being built up and no real threats. JXG, on the other hand, they have three and they haven't really tried to get any others. It's more just a matter of slower expansion on their part. That's really where things are coming in. At the same time, Pet Turtle does have a nice army set that they're going in for. I mean, two and two. Two darts, two scorchers. That is a really strong position to start from, especially when your opponent has lost a lot of their forces on their own attack. Now, at the same time, darts are coming in over to the north, so Pet Turtle should be in a reasonably good position to harass. There is nothing actually blocking this convict. Normally, with shields, you would send something to help with the convict. You'd send a bandit or two, just in case. And actually, that's generally good advice when it comes to any kind of construction in 0k. Send a couple raiders with your constructor, just to be on the safe side. Because generally, if you send those raiders in, the constructor won't be threatened. Although, in this case, it doesn't even matter, because... The dart doesn't care. The dart continues on, gets to a metal extractor, doesn't really worry about anything else. Should be able to take no damage from the commander, because that is what happens with darts. I don't know why I was even building up that sentence the way I was. Should be able to take out the commander with its tiny 50 damage slow beam. That's right. Darts are OP now. For reference there, not actually OP. They're a useful support unit, but that's it. Anyway, Pet Turtle, with a useful support unit, is actually looking quite threatening. Now, JXG does have radar coverage a little outside of the range, though. Pet Turtle, I'm not sure if they're aware of JXG's range, but it doesn't matter. They were pretty clever about staying outside of it long enough. But now that JXG knows, and JXG has to deal with this stuff, and they only have two bands with which to do so. They have seven that are outside of the base, but it's going to take a while for those to come in, and this convict is dead. Just due to positioning, this convict is going to go down as the Scorches come in and wipe it to pieces. Metal Extractors won't have much of a chance. The Bandits should be able to help out, but the thing is the Scorchers are the ones that are retreating right now. And getting rid of another Convict. But yeah, the thing is, they are retreating. And in 0k, whoever retreats wins. Now, for Scorchers, it's a bit tricky because the Heat Beam, you have to be close up. But still, whoever retreats wins. And that is exactly what Pet Turtle is showing. And for those of you wondering what the, the ranking difference is between the two players... I haven't a clue. Let's see. Because like I said, I don't know wh whether silver or blue is better. Like, is that silver? Is that platinum? I, I don't understand. It, or is that... I mean, it's not how it's listed. It's like singularity or something. JXG is 2300... Okay, it's 300 difference. 2300 to 2600 for Pet Turtle. Anyway. So, Pet Turtle is a bit ahead in terms of... In terms of rating... But both players are fairly experienced and fairly skilled. And Pet Turtle is also putting a lot of money into their into the void and not into their units. But at the same time, 
it's the, it doesn't matter. Like the amount of expansion that Pet Turtle is doing, the amount of production they're using, they still have 30 metal per second going into their factory, and they had a 20 metal per second for a while. So it's still fine. They're still in a reasonably good position. The only thing Pet Turtle has to worry about right now is the fact that they are kind of in an iffy spot when it comes to how well they're going to be able to extend it to the late game. JXG is still building up to deal with the Scorchers. They have the Outlaws. They are slowly but surely expanding. They don't have a whole lot of damage being dealt. I mean, these expansions are being built up, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough at this point. But the Outlaws are fine. The Outlaws exist. They're doing their job. So that's still that. JXG, but for that, is still way behind. They're still half the metal extra... Or they'll still have the metal economy. They have Reclaim to work with. Let's just see the actual numbers here. Not much. Okay, they have 200 metal <laughs> Reclaim to work with. They don't have much... Re okay, they really... I yeah, haven't got a whole lot, honestly. Even destroying the Scorchers wasn't a huge boon for them, and they're losing a lot of bandits in the process. Pet Turtle is 400 metal ahead in terms of attrition. They've been 20 metal per second consistently ahead in terms of production value. And J JXG just has not been defending their convicts at all. I mean, it's very clear. Pet Turtle wants to raid. That's when you throw in an outlaw to your convicts. Not even bandits. Throw in an outlaw. That's the only way to stop it. But no, three convicts go down for free. And this is the problem, is that you got to be careful. Like, it's something I have to remember myself, is that when your opponent is trying to raid, if you're not going to be counter-raiding, you have to defend against it. You have to put units in place that are going to be stopping your opponent from actually doing that damage. Because otherwise, your opponent is going to be doing that damage. That's just how it works. Because they know they can raid, and they will. So for that, Matt, for that I think JXG is having a really hard time. I don't know. Like, they, I get why they're doing double convict. They want to build quickly. I just think they should have double convict with outlaw. It's a bit less efficient, but if those three convicts had been alive, where are they? The three convicts that died, they, if they had an outlaw with them, they would have lived, and they would have been able to expand over here and help at least put some pressure on this northern expansion. If that northern expansion was taken, then they would have been able to help build up. At the same time, though, the Stardusts are doing a wonderful job, so at least something is going well for JXG. They can use that to reclaim another 300 metal for their side. So JXG could actually start reclaiming their way into at least a, an uphill battle. I mean, right now it's hopeless. If they start reclaiming, it's an uphill battle. If they turn that into a more even economic setup with properly protected constructors, then it could be even. But right now, JXG is in an extremely difficult spot. And I'm honestly not sure what they can do to actually deal with that as Thunderbird's coming in here on top of everything else. JXG just doesn't want to deal with it anymore. They're done. It's over. They're throwing in the towel. Despite army value being quite close the entire time, which actually implies that considering JXG's difficulty when it came to dealing with Pet Turtle's forces, if JXG had been a little bit more careful with their constructors, JXG would have been way ahead. Like, JXG was neck and neck with the fact that they were losing a lot of units. Like, that's the thing, is there... That there's... So much could have been done by simply having JXG not lose constructors. Oh well, that was that. So, yeah, we're going to be having 2v2 matches now. I mean, that was a shorter match, but the first match is going to be a 2v2 on Aurelian. It's going to be Jasper and Venom versus Sortail and Archangel. And then we'll have another 2v2, and that'll be it. But, yeah. So, Aurelian, which I forgot is still on the 2v2 matchmaker list. It's not on the 1v1 matchmaker list. Izuki Chan will replace that. But, still on 2v2, so we're going to go and watch that after a short break. So, stay tuned. 